This one coming from king5.com. People are moving to Washington's rural communities. Real estate report shows this uh, written by Kayla Lafferty. Catherine, do you believe that this could be a true headline? Yeah, definitely. So realtors found the COVID-19 pandemic and working from home has allowed people the freedom to move away from the city. I mean, my first reaction on this is the language of allowed people the freedom to move away from the city. I really feel like over the last 10 to 12 years, I've been told how much people want to live in the city and the suburbs are dead. Am I crazy thinking that I've heard it that way? No, you're not crazy. But I think the um, people used to have to commute, commute into work. Um, and now that they don't, and some people are being told they won't ever have to commute into work because working from home is working well enough, um, they feel like, hey, why not go out a little bit further? I don't have to drive to work anymore or maybe not as often. So I'm going to get a little bit more house for my money and a little bit more land. Why not? All right. Well, before we get into this, I guess I just feel like that's all backwards from what I've been hearing for the last decade. People didn't want the the suburbs. They wanted access to the city and all the things, and not just like Seattle. The, this is every major city. People are just moving the cities. Suburbs are dead. Uh, but let's let's get into this article. People are packing up and buying homes outside of Seattle, according to Sotheby's first quarter report of 2021. According to Sotheby's, it's a seller's market and people are buying homes in rural, (laughs) rural communities like Carnation, Sultan, Snohomish, Gold Bar, and Darrington. Catherine, where's Gold Bar for people not familiar with it? Gold Bar is maybe, what, 20 miles east of, probably 25 miles east of Everett? I mean, uh, along Highway 2. Does that sound right? 25 miles? Probably. Maybe further. Probably even like, further out. It takes like, if there's no traffic, it takes mm, a half hour. I mean, it's really, I would say it's the foothills of the Cascades. It, yes. It's out there. So, for example, Carnation saw n- nearly a 15% increase in median sales price for homes with an average of six days on market. I mean, this is a, like the exact opposite of the episode that we did on downtown mm-hmm. Seattle. Yeah. Snohomish saw an increase of over 10% in sales price with an average of seven days on market. And that trend continues. And I'll just uh, editorialize here. We talked about this in the other episode about downtown Seattle because we mentioned days on market. Mm-hmm. That number, six incarnation, seven in Snohomish, would probably be lower if it wasn't for review dates. What are review dates, real quick? Um, a review date is typically a seller will list their house on like a, let's say a Wednesday or a Thursday, and then they will say, all right, everyone has a chance to look at the house over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we will look at any and all offers on Monday at 6 p.m. or Tuesday at noon. They'll set a deadline. They want all the offers, if any, by that day and time just to clearly communicate to everyone what the what the plan is for offers. And then the article talks about that people are packing up and leaving Washington altogether. But while people are leaving, others are coming to Washington and many are moving in from places like Los Angeles in New York for jobs in C- in Seattle. But they predict the boom in the rural, com- rural communities is here to stay. Um, I think they're quoting a real estate agent. How would you pronounce her name? Kovakovich. Kovakovich. I've worked with her before. Okay, Barbara. I think I, think I saw Barbara. Beth. Beth. Sorry, mm-hmm. Beth. All right. Um, I think that things have changed and people want the freedom and privacy, that lifestyle where they're still close enough to get to Seattle amenities, yet they can enjoy just having more space. Sounds an awful lot like what you said at the beginning of the episode. Yep. Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Money and Marriage Podcast with Catherine and Darren. And when you're ready, here's four things that you can do right now. Number one, make sure you're subscribed to this show, whether you're watching or listening. If you're watching, you can also click 
the like button, click the thumbs up button. Number two, if you're a first time home buyer, get a free guide, seven costly mistakes home buyers make. Visit costlymistakeshomebuyersmake.com. Number three, if you're selling your home, get access to our get sell ready guide and checklist. It'll show you how to get your home ready without spending a fortune or wasting your nights and weekends updating and remodeling your home. Visit getsellready.com. And number four, start a smart moves conversation with us. Get clarity about what to do next. Get your questions answered, your concerns taken care of, and an action plan customized to your timeline. You can schedule a call with us at smartmovescall.com or start a chat with us. Visit m.me slash persinger group.